Welcome to the Kennet and Avon Canal. Today we're going to be trying a method that's really grown in popularity over the last few years, drop shot fishing. It's very, very popular in America and Europe and over the last couple of years it's starting to become more popular in the UK. We're going to get down to the canal, I'm going to show you the basics of the method and show you why it's great for catching perch. Well, I was just thinking to myself that if you were looking to catch a perch, you cannot imagine a more stereotypical spot between these two boats here. Now, boats are a great spot at this time of year, especially houseboats, because they'll be heating, heating up their houseboat. A little bit of heat gets passed through the hull into the water, attracting prey fish. Food goes over the side and soon the predators home in on it. Now, he's not a huge perch but he's proof that on a freezing cold day, when it'd be hard to get a bite from anything, drop shotting is a really, really valuable method to get, getting a few bites. That one's fallen to the micro fry, well hooked. The sun's come out just in time to light up one of our most beautiful freshwater fish. Just trying in around this little bridge here. I'm just going to swing this one's hand as it's only a tiddler. But another case of really kind of homing in around features where you expect perch to be. And we're in the shade here, I can tell you it's absolutely freezing cold here today. But these little fellas are still falling for these basic drop shot techniques. Really, really effective method. We'll pop this one back, we'll move on. It's got to be a bigger one out there than this. And we're in. Well, we just moved to, uh, to a new area. First cast, we've got a fish. Another small perch, but they're all welcome on a cold day like this. And ground's a little bit harder here, so I won't be putting this one down on the floor. Lift this one up for you. And the hook's actually dropped out in the net there. And what I'm going to do is pop this one back. And what we're going to do is have a look at the rig once I've picked it out of the net and I'll talk you through to how to set up a basic drop shot rig to go out and catch a few perch. We've stopped fishing for a few minutes here on the Kennet and Avon Canal to have a look at the basics of a drop shot rig and what makes it such an effective method. So let me start by just talking you through the very, very basics. We've got a braided mainline, which is zero stretch, which gives great bite indication. Coming down from there, we've got about four feet of eight pound fluorocarbon. And this is tied directly to a size four PowerPoint drop shot hook. Now what you might notice straight away is that's actually tied into the line. And below that is some more eight pound fluoro with our five gram drop shot weight. And let me just show you the reason why this rig is so effective. Unlike other lures where you're constantly battling to keep it at the depth that you want to fish, with a drop shot rig, the weight is on the bottom of the river, canal, lake, whatever you're fishing, and the lure is adjustable in terms of how far you fish it off the bottom. And this means that you can keep it in the kill zone exactly how you want to fish it for long periods of time each retrieve. Now, particularly in conditions like today where it's pretty chilly, this can be absolutely vital to success when predatory fish don't want to move too far. Let's do a step by step and have a look at exactly how you can put this rig together. First things first, you take your fluorocarbon hook link material now, whenever I'm tying any rig, I always cut off a little bit more than you're likely to need in case you need to redo anything. 
So I'm just going to take it out about the length of an arm and across my chest there, so probably about four feet or so, and just cut that off. Pop that down out the way. Now the first thing that we're going to do is tie the hook into the line. It doesn't fish on a hook link, it actually sits on the line itself and that's why you get that type of presentation. And we're going to use a very basic knot to tie it in place and that's a palomar. Now as with any type of fishing it's important that you choose a hook that matches the size of the lure that you're going to be using. When I'm using little lures of four or five centimetres I'll be using the size four or size two hooks, stepping up to a size one when I'm using the seven centimetre or eight centimetre lures. So let's start by tying the hook in place. I take about 40 to 50 centimetres of line first, which will form the link below the hook. And then all I'm going to do is double the line over to form a little doubled length like that. Wet it and start by placing it through the bottom and out the top of the eye of the hook. So I'll just show you that there and that's simply sat on that doubled over section. Now the next step is nice and easy and all we're going to do is tie a simple overhand loop in that section. So the second part of the knot should leave it looking like so. So as you can see it's dead simple. Now at this point before we pull it down it's important that we wet it and then what I do at this stage is pull it down so it's almost tight, make sure that the two parts of the knot go down at the same time. So as you can see it's dead simple, it's a little overhand loop over the hook and then with this tag end we simply place it over the hook like so and it's really important that we remember to do that. So if you pull it down as it is like that it won't have any strength. We simply place it over the hook and then making sure it's nice and wet we can just take the two loose ends and pull them down evenly to make sure that the knot contracts. And with, whenever you're tying a Palomar knot, always make sure that that little tail sits over the front of the hook and isn't left over the back of the hook because otherwise it'll be a messy knot and it be, won't be pulling against itself correctly. So you just pull that down like so. If we've tied our Palomar knot correctly, that's how the hook should sit, tight against the line like so. To match up with this, I've got a seven centimetre hot olive mini fry. And the way that we hook them, we don't thread them on, it's just a case of almost lip hooking them, if you will, as if you're hooking on a, a small live bait. That's how it should sit, and that will give maximum movement. There's no point threading them on as you would a jig head, you get a lot more movement when it's fished in this way. Now, as I said, the tag of the knot will now drop down like so, and this is where we'll be attaching our drop shot weight and I'll just show you how to do that now. This, for those of you that haven't seen it before, is a drop shot weight, elongated, available in various sizes and we've got this section at the top which is much like the eye of a swivel, however it's got this stretch section there which we can actually lock the line into. Now in practice this means that when we're actually fishing we can adjust the depth that the lure fishes off the bottom. Let me give you an example, if we're fishing in quite deep water and we wanted to fish the lure suspended quite a way off, we simply lock it in like so and as you can see that's in place there and we can fish, there we go, a couple of feet off the bottom there, so that's perfect. Now on a day like today it seems that the fish are actually closer to the bottom and all we do to change the depth is pull it down like so and then we just lock the weight in position and we can adjust that throughout the session. Now we end up with quite a long tag there, that doesn't matter, we can just leave that, we don't need to trim it up because that will allow us to adjust the rig during the session. A lot of people ask what type of weight you should use and a basic guide that I tend to go for is around a gram of weight for every foot of water you're fishing in. So fishing small canals you might start with three and a half grams, rivers, lakes which are deeper or any flow you can go heavier, it's not unusual to choose up to 15 or even 20 grams in some situations. So as you can see the basic drop shot rig is really easy to tie, anyone can do it and this will be perfect for you to get out there and catch a few predators. With our rig tied up ready for a spot of drop shot fishing, let's have a look at how we attach it to the main line. 
we've got our 13 pound jig silk mainline and we've got our 8 pound illusion fluorocarbon. Now as you can see I've started by doubling over the end of the illusion and I'm going to pass the end of the jig silk through there. Now I'm going to grip it with my thumb and forefinger to hold it in place. Now having pulled a few inches through like that it's just a case of making 15 tight turns over the two strands of fluorocarbon. And then gently and neatly push them back down so that it sits as snugly as possible. So we'll just make sure everything's sitting nicely like so. Once we've got to that stage, we'll take this tag end of the braid and we're going to take it back down the body of the knot. And depending on how long the knot is and how well it's sitting, we'll do that between three and five times. And this is just for added security. So we end up with this sort of barrel type knot, like so. And when we get to this stage where we've gone back up the leader and then back down towards the loop, we're going to change our grip to hold these strands in place. So I'm just going to now grip the main part like that to expose the loop. We're going to take the ends of our jig silk and place it back through the loop where we started. So that's how it should look at this stage. Now as with any knot, it's really important that we wet it like so. And then very gently, we're just going to tease it down like so. And we'll end up, as you can see, with a very, very neat and ultra strong knot. Now you could use a double grinner or what's called a back-to-back -back grinner for, for this type of thing. However, you'll find that the knot strength that you get from tying it in this manner is far superior, which will mean more fish landed, less tackle left in the water as well. So to finish that, we're just going to trim it up with our braid blades, which are nice and sharp and we'll have no problem cutting through these materials whatsoever. And there's the, the finished product. That'll pass through your rod rings nice and easy, ultra low diameter, yet ultra strong. I was just coming over the top of a few features on the bottom there. I think the, uh, the wall here might have broken away in the past and any little bit of cover like that, perch absolutely love it because they can camouflage themselves away and ambush anything that comes in over the top. And in this case, unbeknown to this little fella, what was coming in over the top happened to be my little lure. And you can see that there's a nice good hook hold there just in the corner of the mouth. Lovely little perch which snapped up our micro fry here at the Kennet and Avon Canal. Lovely little fish. Well, this swim is proving to be perch soup. It's virtually one a chuck. And it just goes to show the value of these mobile methods on a cold day. At this time of year, lots of fish are going to be shoaled up in tight little areas. And by moving around and tracking them down, you can have a really good bit of fun fishing. Fishing a drop shot rig is dead simple. When you cast it out, it's a simple case of letting it go down to the bottom, preferably on a tight line because you can get bites on the drop. Once it hits the bottom, you've got to remember the key thing is to keep contact between the drop shot weight and the lake, river or canal bed at all times. So you don't crank it in as you would with a, a plug or a spoon or a spinner. It's a case of just gently, you can work it on the spot, just with gentle shakes of the rod tip, little lifts and drops. And by having a tiny bit of slack in the line, 
That means that any action that you put into the lure with little lifts and drops are actually imparted into the lure as opposed to being uh, taken up by just pulling the weight forward along the bottom. So you can actually work it on the spot, which when you're fishing up to features such as the overhanging tree over my shoulder here or the boats that are positioned behind me, that's a really good way of just holding the lure in position to explore a particular area. If you're looking to go over a particular area such as under the bridge that we've got here, once you feel that you've kept it in place for quite a while and there's nothing there, you can just gently bring it back towards you a couple of feet with a gentle turn of the handle and start again. So it's just gentle lifts and drops on an ever so slightly slack line. You don't want it too slack because obviously then you won't be able to see the bites and just gently work it back towards you. Now once you get back under your feet or if you've got deep water or features at your feet, you can fish the rig vertically. So I'll just drop it down to the canal bed at my, at my feet here and one little change I make when I'm doing this is just to put the braid over my finger at the reel there and that just gives me a little bit more sensitivity and a little bit more feel. So by dropping the rig down I can feel I've got contact as the weight hits the bottom and then you can just simply walk the rig around the swim whether it's along a marginal feature, whether it's alongside a boat, around any kind of features like that and you can just keep contact all the time just gently dragging the rig around and you'll feel by as you're lifting and dropping you'll feel what the bottom's made up of there and anything that feels a little bit unusual strike. One of the key things that you'll find when you try drop shot fishing for the first time is that because it's one of the only forms of lure fishing where the lure can actually be static at times, some of the takes can be really gentle. They're not going to be those sort of arm wrenching bites that you get with other styles of lure fishing and that's something to be aware of. So they can just be little twitches, gentle tightening of the line or the rod tip pulling over. So if you feel anything that's unusual, it's always worth striking to set the hook. I've stepped up to a slightly bigger lure. Unfortunately, it hasn't increased the, uh, the size of the perch. However, it does show something quite interesting, just how aggressive, even on a freezing cold winter's day, these perch can be. Now, if you watch now, I'm just going to pop this single hook out. And as you can see, that was a fair old mouthful for that perch. Didn't stop him having a go, though. There's lots of drop shot lures available on the market. However, I'm going to give you a shortcut to success by showing you my three favourite patterns for perch fishing. First and foremost, we've got the mini fry. It's got a natural bait fish shape with an elongated tail section and a paddle tail, which gives plenty of movement. Seven centimetres in length and you get six in a pack and we've got various colours and colours are something that I'll come on to in a minute. They're a really good imitation of the average sort of prey fish item that a perch would expect to come across in UK waters. Here we've got something a little bit different. This is the spiky shad. It might appear to have a similar profile to the lure that I've just shown you. However, it's got these little dimples all over it, over 200 along the body there, and that kicks out lots of vibration. And also, for those of you that might have thought about flavouring lures as well, it means that they take flavour very well. And also trap air bubbles, which leaves a trail as you retrieve through the water. With all of those little added extras, this means that for coloured water situations, this is my favourite. It's got a nice big size to it, big paddle tail, plus lots of extra vibration. In winter, sometimes the water can be clear, times can be hard. And much like any other type of fishing, never be afraid to scale down. And my choice in those conditions would be the tiny little four centimetre micro fry. It's got a massive tail section, which still means that it kicks out plenty of vibration and flash in the water. Yet it's got this tiny little bait fish profile that's an absolute killer on difficult days. With regards to colour, if you're fishing in coloured water situations, bright patterns such as fire tiger and other solid colours are absolutely brilliant. If the water's clear, more natural patterns that imitate the type of prey fish you're expecting to come across are a great starting point. However, the rules are always made to be broken in predator fishing, so don't be afraid to experiment on the day to find what works for you. If you're looking to try drop shotting for the first time, it's important that you've got the correct gear for the job. I'll just talk you through the gear that I'm using here today. I've got the Rage Ultron drop shotting finesse rod. 
six foot six, which is the perfect length for fishing smaller waters such as little still waters, canals, drains and small rivers. It's got a nice sensitive tip and that means that any delicate bites that we get, especially when we're fishing the lure static or vertically, we can spot those easily. However, it's got plenty of guts in the middle and lower sections for dealing with any bigger fish that we hook. To balance that, we've got a 1,500 size Ultron Pro reel. As you can see, that balances nicely, nice and smooth, and really importantly when fishing for perch, it's got a lovely smooth drag. If the drag snatches at all, um, like it would on some reels, it's easy to pop the lure out of their mouth. So this is absolutely perfect for this style of fishing. Now the main line is Rage Jig Silk. Low diameter, no stretch, absolutely made for the job. Now you will notice that I've chosen a yellow colour braid and this to me is really important for drop shot fit fishing. The reason for that is a lot of the bites often go off to the side or a gentle tightening of the braid and if you've got a little bow in the braid you see it tighten or you see it pull to one side a lot of the time you don't feel those bites but by having a yellow braid or a brightly coloured braid you can actually spot them and that's a big edge when you're trying drop shot fishing for the first time. Well we're starting to come towards the end of the day now and we've actually moved back up to where we started the day. I've flipped the mini fry in the hot olive pattern across to the far bank in a little spot where I saw some crayfish topping and I've hooked a fish it feels a little bit better. It's either a good perch or it could be a small pike but time will tell. And I cast across to the far side it's actually quite a barren spot but the take was instant. So I'm going to be keen to see what this is because we're coming to that sort of witching hour that time of the day when better fish feed. And to be fair most of the fish that we've caught today have been fairly small and this is the first time that we've hooked something today that feels a little bit more substantial. I think it's just gone in behind a snag there. In fact, no, what's happened here is whatever I've hooked has been grabbed by a slightly larger pike. <laughs> I felt a big, a big knock and then it's just gone solid and whatever's grabbed it is just plodding around the swim at the moment. I'm pretty sure that's what happened because I saw the fish that, that took my lure in the first place and it wasn't a particularly big fish. So a little bit of excitement here as we come to the end of our day and it's just plodding around. Feels like whatever's grabbed it is a good fish as well. Now, of course, we'd be very lucky to get them both in the net, but you never know. You can see a big trail of bubbles coming up off the bottom here. It's that time of day when big predators feed, and it's pretty exciting when stuff like this happens. And of course, it's only in predator fishing that you get this type of thing. So, yeah, I just saw a pike, a decent sized pike, gripping hold of uh, whatever it is I've hooked. Now, if we're really, really lucky, what might happen is the single hook may have transferred into the pike. Um, if that's happening, then we've got a chance of landing the fish. But it's not too far under the surface now. I have seen the leader not a couple of times. And to, to back line there as the, the fish powers away again. Big vortexes here on the surface. And I think we're going to at least get a look at this. I don't know if we're going to gonna land it off we go again every time it sees a little bit more light it powers away now I spend a lot of time on the bank but it's times like this that make the old knees tremble I've got to say it's really ex exciting stuff the fish is powering away you have a look at the the angle of my little uh, finesse drop shot rod here it's taken on a pretty horrendous angle oh big head shakes again and it's actually let go it's still following it around the swim I can see it and it's in fact a a little pike that I've hooked. Big vortex out in the swim there from, uh, from the pike. I'm just gonna, gonna bring it in there. And there we go. If we look across the back there, we can see those big scuff marks where that one almost met its maker this evening. He's had a lucky escape. If he's smart, when I put him back, he's gonna make a very, very quick exit out of this swim before he becomes dinner. With the light fading, I think that's going to be the last cast of the day here on the Kennet and Avon Canal. We've gone through the basics that you need to go out there and try drop shotting. You've seen a few fish get caught along the way, and we had a lot of excitement at the end of the day when that small jack got grabbed by a big pike. Hopefully, you can put these tips to good use to go out there and try this highly productive method for yourself. <laughs>